Natasha. Debbie. Show. The show. <laughs> Welcome to it. <laughs> Just two patriotic girls. Learning about the world. So please, don't take us the wrong way. Hi, welcome to the Natasha and Debbie show. But now, today, we'll be known as the new Map Women. That's map right. Women, Map Women, Map Women. Women. We can't. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> we're the women and here's a map. Oh. Yeah, we're going to get in trouble for this. <laughs> um, today's episode has a lot to do with this, as do all of our episodes here on the Natasha and Debbie show, Fridays and Sundays, UK content only. Mm -hmm. But um, before we get into that episode. <laughs> if you like today's content, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to our channel. <laughs> <laughs> that was epic. <laughs> so we put the action and reaction. What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, just go with it. It's a day of fun. Oh. Today we're gonna be looking at a place we haven't looked at yet. And that is? Bristol. Bristol, England. This video is titled 24 Best Things to Do in Bristol, UK. Now, these 24 things are based off this one person's suggestions, her opinions, etc. That's right. Surely it's not going to include everything. And if there's something that she left out or you want us to, to know about, you drop that in the comments. And hi to all of our friends that live in Bristol. So we've been wanting to look at Bristol. We want to look at every place. And that's why we're here. So where the hell's Bristol? <laughs> <laughs> it is somewhere in this vicinity. <laughs> Is it? I don't know, Debbie. <laughs> I think it's here. So it could be way down here. No, it's in this vicinity. Okay, so you I, know where it is. I, I do know where it is. Um, that Debbie does not. So I'm gonna help you. Okay. Without looking at the map. Let okay? me uh, reach <laughs> for some glasses so I can see what we're map actually women, looking. Map, women, map, <laughs> map, map, women, map. women. I don't know. Um, <laughs> sorry for that. They just took mm. away their likes for the singing. Right. <laughs> Never claimed to. So. It's gonna be south of just, 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 okay. Oh, you saw it. I see it now. Dad, gone it. You just ruined the whole episode. Aww, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Man. I'm kidding. So, Bristol is. Boom! Bristol! Right there. I actually didn't realize it was that south. Maybe you don't consider that south, but. Yeah, I was actually thinking it was more up here. But I thought know, it was hey. too. That's funny because I actually more thought south. it was, I thought it was just south of Birmingham, but I was mistaken. It's down here. So it's just west of southwest of Swindon, just above Bath. There it is, right there on the map. And you really needed that information because you all didn't know. Because did you? you didn't know where it was. I think the episode would be better if I just did this. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to our dear friend Sarah Healy. She sent us this map like a year and a half ago, and it's coming very handy. Hey. Um, <laughs> we've learned a lot from this map. I use it all the time, so um, we appreciate it. Okay, so it's time to check out Bristol. I know nothing about you, Bristol. And 24 things to do there. Yeah, 24 is an interesting number. It is. It's one greater than 23 and one less than 25. Maths, the more you know. <laughs> anyway, time to check out Bristol. Ooh, wow. It's fall. It was beautiful. The bridge Whoa. is this. What? what? Bristol. Oh, holy Bristol. Oh, come ah. on. Okay, pause. Stop. Yeah, how, how, why didn't we see this before now? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think anyone's even really mentioned this much. I have to say, in the 20 seconds of this video, mm -hmm. I might have a new favorite place in the UK. Mm -hmm. I'm not even kidding. Mm -hmm. I love this scene right here with all the different colored buildings that... Bridge was amazing. Uh, a field of deer. Hello. Uh, the beginning of that with all the tree coloring. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying the rest of the UK doesn't look like that involved, but okay, Bristol, you have my full undivided attention. Whoa. Yes. That bridge. That is awesome. Jeez. Hi, my name is Michelle. I'm the Intrepid Guide, your guide to languages and travel. Hi, Michelle. And I'm here in Bristol where I'm going to be showing you some of the best things to do in Bristol and the surrounding area. Please do. Thank God. 
According to legend, two giants named Gorham and Vincent created the Avon Gorge and the ancient King Brennius founded Bristol. In reality, people have been living here for thousands of years, but Bristol has only had a name for the last thousand or so. It was once a small Saxon settlement called Brigstow, literally a place by the bridge. This is now the largest wow. city in southwest of England. As the birthplace of world famous street artist Banksy and the city where John Cabot said, Nice. Did we know the identity of Banksy? Did we know that? I, I didn't I know, know that. I didn't think Anyone even knew where he was born. I didn't know that. Hmm. But either way, okay. Happen to be a Banksy fan over here? Yes. I just told you who Banksy was like two days ago. <laughs> she said, <laughs> I no, read like, about it and you asked, do you know who that is? And I said, oh, uh, no, not really. No, what did you say? And I'm like, like is it the person that paints the umbrella thing picture? <laughs> and she knows what I'm talking about. She says yes. So I was right. I did know. <laughs> I just didn't know that I knew. That I know. Yes, let's get back in the No, keep going, please. Oh, oh no, no, no. <laughs> As the birthplace of world famous street artist Banksy, Banksy. and the city where mm -hmm. John Cabot set sail from to discover Newfoundland in North America, <gasps> let me show you nice. the best things to do in Bristol. I'm in love, Bristol. Where I'm standing now is Corn Street, and together with Wine, Broad, and High Street, this forms the oldest part of Bristol City when it was a walled medieval town. This beautiful building behind me is nice. called The Exchange, and it is a grade one listed building that was built between 1741 and 1743 wow. by John Wood the Elder, who was an English architect from the neighboring town of Bath. Okay. For many years, a corn market was held inside this building, which is how this street got its name of Corn Street. But today, it is home to the St. Nicholas Market, which is open from Monday to Saturday. Oh, I love nice. this. That's cool in there. Oh yeah. I'm jamming out this. Another reason why the exchange is so interesting is because of its clock. It was installed in 1822, and the reason why it's so special wow. is because it has two minute hands. The red hand tracks the Greenwich Mean Time, so the time from London, and the pink hand actually tracks the local time of Bristol. The second minute hand oh. was added as a way of standardizing the time across the country with the introduction of the railways. Bristol okay. adopted the railway time Whoa. on the 14th of September, 1852. And according to the old timings, if it was at noon here in Bristol, then it was 10 past 12 in London. <laughs> of the time actually did their business and dealings on what is known as a nail, which is this brass table that you see behind me. Huh. Now, there were nine located in the city of Bristol, but four of them were moved and placed out the front of the exchange building. Now, these Ooh. ones date from 1625 to 1631. Wow, that's cool. I knew they'd be old. Wow. Yeah, that's incredible. I want to see that. One of the best things to do in Bristol is to go hunting for Banksy artwork. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't know too much about this world famous street artist, but what we do know is that he was born in Bristol in 1974. How do we know and that? he was part of a wave of street art that was taking the city by storm in the 80s. Banksy painted this piece in June 2006 in what was a rather daring location because it is located opposite the headquarters of the City Council of Bristol no. who at the time were trying to have Banksy locked up. Now what Banksy did was he organised scaffolding to be placed up against the wall and then a few days later he organised for the scaffolding to be taken down and voila, you get the well-hung man nice. the well-hung ah. lover. Wow! Okay, let's stop for a minute here. This is just crazy beautiful. Rich in history. Mm -hmm. uh, who lives here? Do I, and I'm so sorry if I if we have friends on Facebook and Patreon that do, and I just don't remember. It's hard sometimes to keep everyone to in remember my, when yeah. you're in, in, on the go. Um, but yeah, I mean this is beautiful. Even in the fall, I mean look at these colors. Fall is my favorite season when it's mm -hmm. actually fall in America. I literally dressed for the occasion. I didn't even know. I am green <laughs> with envy of Bristol. Yeah, you are. I am. I mean this is. Oh. Amazing. I can't uh, wait to see more. I know you guys hear us say all the time, I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> that we, we fall in love. Oh, we love this place. It's great. We're not just saying that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Trust me. We're not just saying that. And right now, I am like, seriously like going, wonder what the housing cost is over mm -hmm. here. True. Hmm. This is a place I could see myself living in. Is it fairly reasonable to live in Bristol? Yeah. Is it? I'm going to ask questions later. Please stay at the till the end because I do already have questions and I know I'm going to have more. Mm -hmm. So please stay to the end of the uh, reaction. Located just off Park Street in the West End is Brandon Hill, the oldest park in Bristol and where you'll find Cabot Tower. 
The tower was built in 1897 wow. to commemorate the 400 year anniversary of John Cabot's journey from Bristol to what is current day in Newfoundland in Canada. And it was under the commission of Henry VII that he discovered North America. John Cabot's discovery in 1497 is the earliest known European exploration of North America since the Norse visited Vinland in the 11th century. If you didn't know already, John Cabot was actually an Italian explorer and navigator. For some reason, we always use an English version of his name. But in fact, in Italian, his name is Giovanni Cabotto, uh. and he lived from around 1450 till about the year 500. The tower is not only one of the best things to do in Bristol, it's also free. And you can even climb to the top of this 105 foot tower that will give you excellent views over the city and the harbour side. That's gorgeous. It's a good stair workout. I want to see the homes, but we won't. Located next to Bristol City Council headquarters is the beautiful Bristol Cathedral, which yes. is one of England's great Funny. medieval churches. The cathedral was founded around 1140 by a prominent local citizen called Robert Fitz Harding, who was also a supporter of Henry II. Now this used to be an Augustinian abbey run by Augustine monks. This grade one listed wow. building covers 22 and a half thousand square feet and attracts wow. visitors from all around the world. Well, yeah. Say why. Huh. I'm feeling wow. some very small Cincinnati vibrations here. Uh, our a little bit. Uh, small being our city being much smaller than this. Mm -hmm. um, as far as like the big buildings and the, the oldness of it all. Yeah. Oldness? The That's age. A, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the brain. <laughs> I don't know what that leaves me. <laughs> I'm thinking about the amazing museums we have here in our city. Mm -hmm. Now we have no Banksy's, but we have some amazing murals. We do. Right? Um, thinking of certain parks like Alt Park. Yeah, we have a Hyde Park, Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. I know, funny, right? And, but, um, but Alt Park, mm -hmm. like what we just saw with that tower was yeah. like, not the tower, but you know what I mean? Like it's, it kind of reminded me of uh, the, the Cabot Tower. Yeah. Um, yeah, just certain things like, and then like, I don't know, I'm just feeling certain vibes there that I feel like it's, it's kind of like home. That feels mm -hmm. home to me. I feel like I could be at home here. That's true. It does seem warm and. Yeah. You guys know me to a certain degree and some of you more than others. Um, what do you think? Let me know. Well, how would, I, could how would I fit in? Be the place. How would we fit in? I think we'd fit in great. I'm being serious here. One of the best things to do in Bristol is to visit the Bristol Museum and Art Gallery. Done. It's over three floors with 19 Whoa. galleries. What? It tells the story of the world from the beginning of time all the way through to present day. Wow. a Banksy fan then you definitely have to pay a visit to the museum because back in 2009 under the strictest confidentiality Banksy organized an exhibition here that took over the museum and it was called Banksy versus Bristol and one of the pieces from that exhibit was left behind and it is called the paint pot angel unfortunately <coughs> though it is on loan so I can't see it today but I highly recommend you come and visit because it will be back soon or oh, that's beautiful mm-hmm What are you? Oh. Sorry. <laughs> I love deer. Located just 10 minutes by bus from the city centre of Bristol, this is the Ashton Court Mansion. And it used to be the home of the Smith family, but today it's now a historic park. And if you're lucky, if you wander through the fields, mm. you can also spot some deer. They're huge. Look, Debbie, there's canals. There is canals. Oh, come on. Oh, oh. In former Amazing. warehouses on Bristol's harbour side, this is Watershed. Watershed is a cross platform venue boasting a program of independent film and events, plus occasional live music and festivals. Uh, and today, there's even a market. This is like everything I love. Did you know that Bristol has its own currency? Well, it does, and it's called the Bristol Pound. And this is it. This came out on the 19th of September 2012, and this is what is known as a local or a community currency. And it was established in order to encourage people to spend their money with local and independent businesses. Bristol oh, Pound. that is awesome. We have, um, that's really cool. That's very smart. I love that. We have, a um, like, right around the Christmas season, mm -hmm. uh, what is it called? I forgot. Shop Small Saturday yep. or Small Business Saturday? Yep, Small Business Saturday. <clears throat> Big, it's the day after Black Friday. Mm -hmm. um, but it is a good day, and people are encouraged to do that. Most people do. I always do. Um, I always try to support local businesses over always. big corporations. But yes. that is great. I never heard of the community No, I haven't currencies. either. Is, what other places have them? Please let us know. This video is amazing. 
can be used to pay for local taxes, electricity bills, and even your bus ticket. And some businesses even apply special discounts for those who do use Bristol Pound. Oh, that's great. The Bristol Pound can be used in paper or electronic format, just like conventional money, and it is worth the equivalent of one sterling pound per Bristol Pound. The Bristol Pound isn't legal tender, which means that these act as a sort of voucher, and they expire every three years. Okay. When they do, the community can submit their own designs to appear on the currency. That's Cool. How cool is that? Please if you want to get faces. your hands on some Bristol pounds, then you can head into the tourism office located at Watershed. This is incredible, man. I'm pumped right now. What? Located at Prince's Wharf is this faithful and fabulous reconstruction of the boat, the Matthew of Bristol, that John Cabot took when he sailed to North America in 1497. The boat was built here in Bristol on the 500th anniversary of John Cabot's original voyage. Upon completion, she set sail to reconstruct Cabot's original journey. Wow. Oh, I was hoping she took us on there. That's amazing. Located inside the exhibition space M Shed on the harbour side is Banksy's <laughs> Grim Reaper. He painted this in May 2003 on the side of a boat, and in order to preserve it, it was cut out and brought here where it's on permanent display. M Shed wow. is also worth a visit because it has an incredible exhibition about the history of Bristol. Yeah, go back to that. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm right with her with you. Thank you. you. Ah! <laughs> that right there. What are these modern, cool buildings? I are know. those houses? Are they homes? Are they apartments? Are, what, what, are they condos? Are they apartments? What, what's what's, what's happening here? A little rooftop. I we need to know. I need to see more inside there. Yeah, I need to get in one of those. Mm -hmm. Um, anyone here live in one of those? And can we get a tour? Yes, please. <laughs> she said, please. please. I want to live please. there. Yes, we um, would have to live there. That's gonna be. If we went there, we would have to live there. I bet it's really expensive. Maybe it's not so bad. Really? It probably is, but you know. Hmm. Do tell. I'm sorry. But right now, this is number one on my list as far as places mm -hmm. I would live in mm -hmm. the UK. Which I'm surprised I'm saying that because of so many other places. But right now, this is it. Don't want to get mad at me. I'm being I honest know. with you. But like living in, yes. What color would we choose? Blue, green, yellow? You know you'd choose blue. Yeah, I probably would. But there's three <laughs> blue ones, so I might have to go something a little different. <laughs> Back to the video. That's monstrously cool and wow. huge. What? One of the best things to do in Bristol is to visit Brunel's SS Great Britain, one of the most important historic ships in the world. The SS Brunel was a passenger ship, and when she launched in 1843, she was called the greatest experiment since the creation, and she was advanced for her time. It is currently a museum, and if you're feeling adventurous, you can even climb up the main mast. The SS Great Britain was the largest passenger ship in the world from 1845 to 1854. Really? And she was built by Isambard Kingdom Brunel. What makes the Great Britain so special is while other ships had been built of iron or equipped with a screw propeller, the Great Britain was the first to combine these features in one large ocean-going ship. That's incredible. That ship was super cool. Did you see that? They had yeah. like a fake water there so you could go up and down. Was it fake or was it well, just it was some like water? water in between glass yeah. or something. Yeah. That was amazing. I know. And how old that was and how I monstrously know. big that was. It would be nice to walk around in there, but I ain't climbing up that thing. Mm -mm. De go watch our Manning the Mass video. No, Debbie, we, Debbie lost it during that video. No. That was a great video though. But yeah, she did not handle that well. As soon as I saw that mask, then you, and you instantly... Mm -mm. Nope. <laughs> not happening. <clears throat> this tiny village of converted shipping containers is called Cargo and one of Bristol's main hotspots for foodies. These stacked shipping containers have been filled with tiny local independent eateries, bars, restaurants and shops. How cool. Red light district. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Pretend like it's 1853 and it's prohibition because we're about to step inside Hyde & Co, which is an award-winning cocktail bar famous for its creative cocktails. This low-lit speakeasy was inspired by the great cocktail bars of New York City. So let's go inside and party like it's 1853. <laughs> I can tell that this place is not going to be a cheap place to live, Debbie. No. There's no way. It's too cool. Vegan junk food. Ooh. <clears throat> oh, hello. I'll take that, yes. It's vegan. I don't know if he would. Yeah. 
This is too much. Of England Academy is the oldest art gallery in Bristol. It is also the UK's only regional Royal Academy of Art. Set inside a stunning Grade 2 listed building with five naturally lit galleries, this is one of the most beautiful exhibition spaces in all of the country. Wow. What better way to learn about what life was like in the 1700s here in Bristol than by paying a visit to the George House Museum. This historic building was built in 1970 for John Pinney, who was a slave plantation owner and a wealthy sugar merchant. The Georgian house is especially important because this is where an African by the name of Pedal was enslaved. In 1765, at the young age of 12, Perry Jones was bought by John Pinney to work on one of his plantations in Nevis. In 1784, he moved with the family from Nevis to Bristol where they lived in this Georgian house. Perra was John Pinney's personal servant for 32 years and to commemorate his legacy there is a footbridge named after him called Perra's Bridge to commemorate the life of a slave who lived and died in Bristol. Whoa, That's cool. whoa, whoa, whoa. I know, what's this? What's this? All of this. With the ultimate urban glamping experience right in the heart of Bristol, you can't pass up staying at Brooks Guest House. We could stay what there. What makes this place Tell so them. special Tell is them. that on the Tell them. I'm freaking out. We could stay there. That what's, would be so cool. What's my obsession right here? The Airstream? Yeah, the Airstream. Yes. And that's so cool. Okay, I feel like someone, like, I feel like God just said, hey, Natasha, yeah, um, I'm going to make you a city. <laughs> You're gonna have to move though. It ain't gonna be in America. But I made it for made it for me. Mm, and it is pretty here much it is. designed for you. Are you freaking kidding me with the airstream? I love those airstreams, and that's kind of cool that they're up on a roof. That's amazing. It, it's awesome. This is. I'm so sorry. That was. Hopefully, we get to see inside. I if doubt not, it. I'm gonna be googling. Oh, googling. Yeah. So Brooks Guest House. Mm -hmm. Okay, Brooks Guest House. Brooks. Got it. You can't pass up staying at Brooks Guest House. Oh, that isn't what makes this place so special is that on the rooftop there are four rocket retro caravans that you can stay caravans, in. Caravans, sorry. For Each of the shit. caravans were handmade in Britain and they're all fitted with eco friendly showers and lighting. And in 2014, Brooks Guest House won the Silver Award for Green Tourism. Yeah, yeah, let's go take a look inside. Yes! <laughs> can we just buy one of those and live oh, in that wow. and just travel the UK? I think we could. Super cool. I want to live in there. <laughs> there are four different size caravans that you can choose the from. One. There is a 16 foot, 18 foot, and 20 foot. Mm -hmm. the 20. Each of them are fitted with a double bed, has its own TV. There's also a dryer, kettle, and heating. Good Avocado food. Fest. Nice. Mm. Even rainy days, places. The second part of my trip, I'm staying at the Avon Gorge Hotel by Hotel Devant. And the reason why I chose this place is because it is located in a separate part of Bristol. Mm. It's in the neighborhood of Clifton and it is close to the Clifton Suspension Bridge. So you get amazing. Well, that's fine. We have a Clifton here in Cincinnati. So uh -huh. I'm not really home. Seeing that hotel too, now everything, I'm like, yeah, this is way going to be above our price range. This place is like super nice. Yeah, super most likely, but. We could dream. No, I don't want to dream. I want to do this. <laughs> Did you see the bridge with the fog? I mean, that was like pretty cool scene. I mean, you barely see a little bit in this. I but... was looking at the, where was it? Oh, it was way back. Dang it. I'll watch it back when I edit the video. It's in the neighborhood of Clifton and it is close to the Clifton Suspension Bridge. That so bridge? you get amazing views yeah. from the dining area and from your room. Yeah, it was that bridge. Wow. The best things to do in Bristol is to visit the beautiful neighborhood of Clifton. And I'm here now at Royal Park Crescent, where you'll find this beautiful terrace of 46 houses that was built by James Lockyer from 1791. Due to money problems brought on by the war with the French, it took another 30 years before the crescent was completed in 1820. Amazing. And it was once believed to be the longest crescent in Europe. Wow. This is, you know, just... We've been doing, sorry, I keep cutting you off. I'm sorry. You're I'm fine. like overly excited. Is it, be honest, is it just me? No, I mean, this place is gorgeous and it seems to have everything that we kind of like. Kind of um, like. You know, museums, a little bit of arts, Love. really good food. Yeah. Uh, cool places to live, walk around, yeah. parks. That road right there next to that cliff and, mm -hmm. and, and the water there, that is cool. This bridge is amazing. I'm, uh -huh. a, I'm, we've paused this a lot and I apologize, but I don't at the same time because I am seriously in love with this place. 
like in love. The world famous Clifton Suspension Bridge was designed by the Victorian engineer Isambard Kingdom Brunel, oh, who described it as my first love, my darling. It took 33 years to complete the bridge, but unfortunately Brunel didn't live to see its completion Aww. in 1864. That's not Originally fair. designed to cater for horse-drawn traffic, today the bridge serves as a crossing for 4 million vehicles every year. Wow. Wow. So, wow. There. One of the nicest things to do in Clifton Village is to take a stroll through Birdcage Walk, mm -hmm. which gets its name from the arches that lie in the walkway. All that remains are the burial grounds and the memorials from the church that stood here in the 1820s but was destroyed during the Bristol Blitz. Oh, oh no. Okay, look and see how or rich the people are dressed. In the heart of Clifton Village is the Clifton Arcade, which was built between 1876 and 1878 by Joseph King. This I'm gonna say it, you've never asked, so I'm gonna do it. Mm -hmm. What the hell is an arcade? Because <laughs> <laughs> here it's only video games, you know? Mm -hmm. That's what an arcade is in America. I assume it's a shopping center, because that's what we've always seen when we've seen these videos, but mm -hmm. there have been plenty of ones we've seen where it's like ar the arcade, and I'm like, I don't know what that is. Yeah, I think it's like mall. I never wanted to ask. Something. You never asked. Did no, you I know? didn't ask. No, I don't know. I'm guessing because when you see arcade, then you see shopping. See, but I, exactly. But I didn't want to sound. Okay, I didn't want to sound stupid by asking before. But I'm like, it's time to just be honest. We don't know what that is. An arcade here, like I said, mm -hmm. was always video games and stuff, which are pretty much gone. But um, is it? I mean, you guys have malls called malls, right? Or is it the same thing? Yeah. Uh huh. Uh. Let us know. You tell us. Thank you. Victorian Arcade was originally called the King's Arcade or the Clifton Bazaar and inside you'll find 17 unique shops selling vintage clothing, jewellery and antiques. What's this castle thing? I think she might tell us. Uh, We're heading it. there. Heck yeah. Located near the Clifton Suspension Bridge is the Clifton Observatory and the Giant's Cave. According to local folklore, there were two giants that lived here, so we're going to take the 130 steps down to go and see where they lived. History tells us that the cave was part of a small chapel no, in 105 AD I'm good. when they found Romano British pottery down inside. And during the 17th century, it was revealed that a man was living here in religious solitude. The tunnel oh, leading wow. down to the cave is 200 feet long or 61 meters no. and opens out onto a cliff face with beautiful views over the Avon Gorge. I, I'm oh, not walking down that claustrophobic thing. Oh, of course, wow. you wouldn't step on that, would you? Oh, yeah, whoa. I just went look down. Gosh, no, I couldn't do that. I'm too claustrophobic for that tunnel-y thing. <laughs> It's a castle-y thing. castle thing. Located just 15 minutes drive outside of Bristol city centre is Blaze Castle Estate Blaise. and Museum. It's set amongst 400 acres of parklands. Wow. Inside you can see everyday objects from centuries That's... past, including Victorian toilets, bars, kitchen and laundry equipment. Oh no, she heard toilet. Victorian toilets, we can go see at the... <laughs> I need to go to check out the Victorian toilets. <laughs> Model trains, dolls, toys, and peering costume inside the museum. What is well, that's it from me. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, M amazing. <laughs> exactly. Forget this. Okay. You know what? Do I have any cash in here? I'm gonna buy some. <laughs> I'm buying our tickets right now. You get the tickets? I'm serious. This is ridiculous. That, that I did not expect. The second this started. Mm -hmm. It was amazing from start to finish. So much to do. And she only gave us 24. And I'm sure she didn't get to everything. There was a lot of Banksy things on there. So I feel like we could have taken out all but one mm -hmm. and see more stuff. But um, hit that like button if you liked this. And if you didn't like this, I don't know what to say to you. Because yeah, I don't know what you like. Yeah, this I, we can't cool. please you um, <laughs> because this pleased me and I, I'm not that easy to please. Anyone in Bristol, seriously, wow. You Hello? live in a beautiful city <laughs> with so many cool, amazing things. We already know this would not be something we could afford to, to ever live in. But I'll tell you what, <clears throat> I have never considered actually moving out of America to live in another place. And we've talked about mm. doing that with the UK. 
This changed my mind. Really? Over the Cotswolds? Well, for one, there's no way in hell we'll ever afford the Cotswolds. So, no. But this felt more like a place I could feel at home. Yeah. I could see myself walking into that one arcade when they showed some of the Christmas decorations. Yes. I could see myself yep. walking there, being in there. You know, I could see myself eating at a lot of these restaurants, you know, just walking around and feeling like, wow, look at what I'm seeing with my own mm -hmm. eyes every day. And this is a, a different life. It's like, it's life 2.0. Life mm -hmm. 2.0. I'm being serious. This made me feel, and I love that this was in fall. I love that it was raining. Mm -hmm. Weird. I don't even like rain. But I loved that there. Um, but it was still very warm and inviting. It was. Mm -hmm. um, I have so many questions now that my brain's just kind of locked up and I don't even know what to ask. But would love to know what, I mean, even, okay, we, we, we made jokes about, they weren't jokes, they were real, but mm -hmm. those modern looking homes. Mm -hmm. We know those would be way out of the budget. But what is a typical affordable home? <laughs> <laughs> What's affordable home over there? And... Um, What's the downsides? Be honest. What are the cons? Because mm -hmm. most, okay, none of the travel videos typically show you the no, negatives. Sure don't. There's negatives in any city, of course, any place in the world. So, what are those? You have questions too? Otherwise, I'm just going to be here for 20 minutes. No, because I loved everything I saw. Then I don't have any questions. Okay, in that case, all right, so Let's get out go. of here. Um, <laughs> number 10, I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right, guys, this was great. I better shut up because I'll be here all night talking about this, but I'm just, I'm feeling so much from this video. Mm. Um, let us know if you're from Bristol. Please say hi. Um, join us on Facebook if you're not already. Come on, guys, we need you over there. We love talking and getting to know people, becoming friends and family. Um, we do a lot of live videos. We'd love to have you. Um, so join us over there, and uh, we'll be back on Sunday. So until then, guys, please... Love like jazz. Be as strong as Tyson. Bye. Bye.